Hi and welcome to my channel in the flight briefing room. This video is going to be a little bit of a product review, but it's a product I bought. Um, I bought it because I want to know how much fuel is in my tank. Now my paramotor, I use a mirror on a bit of cord. I look down and I can see on the tank how much I've used. In my PB, however, it's got a fully enclosed fairing around the tank, so I can't see how much is in there. I could work it out on fuel, um, what the fuel burn is, and then work that out on time, but actually I'd really like to know how much is in the tank. So this device, by Tiggy Aviation, is an electronic fuel gauge, but it works in a very specific way. So here we have the Tiggy Aviation's fuel flow meter as it comes in its box. Um, and basically what you get inside is very few items. It's a very, very simple system. So this is the cable that allows the data uh, to, be t to be read from the fuel flow meter. This is the fuel flow meter. This is, this is the heart of the device. And effectively, you split your main system, system from the tank to the carburetor, and there's an impeller inside this, and the system reads how quickly or slowly that's turning. And this is a very, very accurate piece of uh, equipment. It's got to be installed in a specific way. Um, so I'll put that to one side for a minute. This is a uh, standard um, nine volt battery. The system works between eight and 28 volts uh, with an on off switch there. Uh, and that's a standard 5.5 by 2.1 connector on the end. So if you need to run this remotely, put it away, you could get a, an, an extension need to run in between that if required. Um, this is the device itself, this is the module um, with all its circuits and the bits and pieces and this is, this is the crux of it. So it takes all the data from this and then runs a load of algorithms that then tells you uh, how much fuel you have left by how much you've used. It's not measuring what's in the tank. Um, I'll just power this up quickly and you'll see once it runs through its boot sequence. Okay, and that's how quickly it's turned on. Um, I've already been in and programmed this for my PB, which the maximum I can carry is 11 litres. Now, I'll always fill to 11 litres because I don't have to lift it off the ground. I know that I will always have that amount in there. Um, but on the back of the device, what you've actually got here is two buttons that are effectively your um, menu entry and adjustment buttons. And that's it. So two buttons, module, power supply, and a fuel flow meter. So you haven't got to be drilling holes in your tank. And that's one thing I liked about this. It was a neat system that didn't require me to actually drill any holes in the tank. All I did was split the, split the main fuel line, install the fuel flow meter, and then install these where I could see it on the PB. Um, I've seen these used on paramotors before and run with the cable uh, all the way to the flight deck but that just means you've got to connect it and disconnect it. But because I'm using the same engine that is used on a paramotor, I wanted to do a, a sort of cross analysis to see whether if it worked well on my PB, that pe whether people would want to use it on, the, uh, on their paramotors for accurate fuel consumption, because it has actually got fuel flow. You can see if at that trimmer setting, that um, power setting, you're using more or less to um, get better economy out of your engine. Um, but I say, I'll be doing a number of um, flights to make sure this is accurate. And one thing I do like about it, as you read through the instructions, for me, I like pictures, um, and there's pictures and understanding, is that you've got this element here that allows you to adjust how accurately, or what the algorithm, uh, you can adjust the algorithm for this to make it more accurate to how much you're using for your system. So if it's over reading and telling you it's used more fuel than it's actually consuming, uh, you can adjust it down. And if it's not using as much as it's saying it's used, then you can adjust it back up again. And I think that's a really good feature that you can adjust the system yourself to make it as accurate as possible within your, your um, paramotor or, or sub 70 uh, two stroke system. This has got also two settings for fuel consumption and it's got a, a low rate with between one and six liters per hour and a high rate between two and 15 liters. So this will actually also work on micro lights as well that have got a really high fuel consumption. Um, so it, it, it's got a different element within its algorithm. But anyway, let's go from the flight briefing room and let's go and see how easy it is to install on my PB. Hello everyone, and it's a bit of a cold day today on the airfield, but basically I'm going to be fitting the Tiki fuel gauge and I'm going to take you through all the processes and stages that I'm going to go through to make sure that I'm going to fit it correctly. And basically, I've got, the, I've got some fuel in the tank already and I'm just looking where the fuel system goes. And there is a pickup on the bottom of the tank. It goes all the way up to the primer bulb. That primer bulb then feeds 
directly into the carburetor. So between there and that main pickup, there isn't a lot in the way other than the primer bulb, but I do want to make sure that I can fit it in in accordance with the manual. And effectively, it needs to be fitted vertically. It can't be fitted upside down. So at the moment, I'm thinking about fitting it to this part of the, uh, of, of the frame. I did try and do a sort of bit of a, while I'm installing it, but I thought it was a bit more of a faff. Uh, I'd rather just show you the finished product. Um, so these are the P-clips I've, uh, I've been using. Um, and with the brackets, so they're just mounted there. That's mounted on securely with the cabling running through. I've run the cabling underneath, behind here, up with the other elements of the wiring looms that go to the engine. Um, and this is the fuel flow meter. I've added about 10 inches of Tigon tubing of the right diameter. Um, and as you can see, I've tried to make it flow so there's no kinks in it. This has to be orientated this way up and there's an out arrow here. So that's going back to the main carburetor. As you can see, I've already primed it. And this is the pickup. I've mounted it on this stub because this stub isn't going to move, this vibration mount is, and I didn't want too much more vibration going through it. Wherever you're going to mount it on this airframe, there's going to be some element of vibration. In the pictures, it shows it actually mounted right near the engine. I wanted to mount it above it, and I've made sure that everything is going to be clear of the pull, the pull system, so there's nothing more going to happen. Um, so there's going to be no effect on that side of it. Um, I've removed the covers, so now I've shown you that complete installation, which didn't take too long, just more fiddling to make it fit with the piping. Um, I, I'm going to try and start the engine and see if I can get any readings off the fuel gauge. So, so there we have it. The uh, system is actually running. I'm not sure what the refresh rate is, but clearly it's decrementing. But I won't be able to get any really accurate figures until I've, um, I've done some flight trials and can verify what I took off with and what I landed with. Following the first part of the video, I wanted to fit it and then test it on a number of flights just to make sure that the fuel flow rate was accurate. I've had to adjust it a number of times, but the Tiggy itself wasn't the, my, uh, my main concern. My main concern was actually being able to see it in flight. So where I originally fitted it, and I originally fitted it about here, was actually not very convenient. I, I thought I'd be able to see it with um, uh, where it positioned under my arm during flight. It just wasn't practical. I then fitted it down here, and I fitted it down here for the flights I did from Cywell. It was, it was okay, but wasn't brilliant. Again, it was still light and, and by my side and I couldn't see it very well. So what I've done is I've actually made a very, very small little mount here where the battery sits inside and I can see that really, really easily from in flight. You probably might have noticed on some of the flights where I was lifting my map up just to have a look underneath. Um, and I'm really happy with where it is at the minute. The way I actually adjust the uh, figures is actually just by lifting it up, these two uh, tie wraps just hold it, and I can get to the two buttons underneath to adjust the fuel levels. And to get to the battery, I've just positioned it inside where I can turn it off and on, and that's where it's gonna be. When I first received the Tiggy, the algorithm was set at 105%. I've now progressively brought that down to 95%, only because it's giving me more and more accurate readings, following the instructions and just working out where it needs to be. The last two flights were to Western Zoiland and back. I didn't adjust anything. I flew there, I flew back, and it's as accurate as I can read to eye on the 5.8 litres to what it looks like on the tank. And I'm sure there'll be a picture there somewhere showing you where it looks like. Uh, to me, that's accurate enough for the type of flying I'm doing. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to see inside that tank during flight to know how much fuel's left. 
So no real need to head back to the flight briefing room. I hope this gives you a little bit more information about the Tiggy fuel gauge. I'm really impressed with it. I'm sure over the flights I'll be able to get it dialed in to the near quarter litre, which is more than accurate enough for the type of flying I'm, I'm needing to do. There is no way for me able to see that tank during flight down the side. It, it is just too tight. I can't even see the fuel gauge, the Tiggy fuel gauge that was under my arm, let alone look down into a dark space. So the Tiggy fuel gauge is the only way for me to be confident that I know what's in my tank. A lot of people have said in the past, why don't you just um, work out your fuel consumption and then run from that? For me, I just don't like to do that. That's maybe it's just a quirk of my own, my own flying style. Um, but for now, I'm really happy with this fuel to, uh, Tiggy fuel gauge and I'll be using it from this day forth. So until the next time, everybody, fly safe.